new fallout in the IRS political targeting scandal as a public interest law firm comes forward claiming that pro-life groups were also subjected to extra scrutiny from the IRS. A question that came up during those contentious IRS hearings a couple of weeks back. Now you should know that they have been complaining about this for years, long before we learned about the IRS targeting Tea Party uh, groups. Chicago's Thomas More Society says it represents a pro-life group in Iowa that claims it was singled out when it applied for tax-exempt status. Sound familiar? It says agents not only stonewalled that application, but also demanded to know things like the content of the members' prayers of the group that was applying. And they claim that the IRS tried to force, uh, forbid members from picketing outside of abortion clinics. Can they do that? Peter Breen is an attorney for the Thomas More Society with me now. Peter, uh, I looked at your materials, and I mean, I'm looking at letters from you uh, and press releases from you guys dated April 2011, long before we knew about the IRS targeting conservatives. Uh, you were saying, your group, that they are targeting pro-life groups with extra requests uh, and inappropriate requests, and people had their doubts. And yet now we find out, indeed, they were doing it to whole groups of people, conservative-leaning groups, limited government groups, and so on. And is that what happened in your case? Absolutely. Uh, we had had what we thought were isolated incidents until the most recent scandal broke. And once that happened, we dug through our files and said, look, we've helped multiple organizations over these past few years during the Obama administration to fight off the IRS from these sorts of unconstitutional inquiries. And really, I mean, not just unconstitutional, but just inappropriate at any level uh, based on the IRS rules. Now, I know that the, you believe this started happening as early as 2009 and that this may have been going on for much longer than we than we know, at least with respect to the Tea Party groups, which began in 2010. You say they sought details from um, pro-life groups, including the content of their members' prayers at a Planned Parenthood facility. Is that true? Well, they, want, they asked specifically in the, in the documents about the activities at the prayer meetings of our clients in Iowa, and also to know the content of the signs they would hold outside of Planned Parenthood. Here's the thing, if your concern is keeping 501c3 charities from doing political work, well then why do you care about what they do at their prayer meetings or what they're doing outside of a Planned Parenthood? They're not canvassing voters there. Uh, it's obvious what they're doing. It's non-political in terms of campaigning. It is perfectly appropriate for 501c3 public charities. And they also went on to ask whether the group, uh, one of these groups, uh, Christian Voices for Life, whether they did education on both sides of the issues. I mean, what... <laughs> What is that supposed to mean? Is this, is this what the, the Christians are supposed to be doing now? Like, we're, well, we're pro-life and we believe life begins at conception. But you should also know in evaluating our argument how the other side feels. I mean, w would you ask the NAACP if they're going to see what the white supremacists do and they're going to present both sides of the <laughs> issue? Of course not. I mean, this is, this is crazy. And so obviously advocacy groups will advocate for their position. The First Amendment allows it. These are entirely inappropriate questions. Uh, fortunately for us, we were able to fight off the IRS in the case of these clients. And even since the, the, the hubbub happened, we've now had other people come to us who are in the midst of their IRS processes. We're trying to help them as well. Do you believe then that this, I mean, because yesterday we talked to a pro-Israel group that got this, uh, that, that, that got this kind of treatment from the IRS. Now the pro-life groups are saying we got this kind of treatment from the IRS. And now you've, of course, got... Tea Party and other limited government groups coming out, and that's been confirmed in their cases that it's been going on. Are they related, or are they totally different things? Well, we can't help but think it's related. At some point, you get enough smoking guns, and you, you have to say there, there, there has to be a tie. And as well, all of this happened after President Obama took office. So we weren't having these troubles under the prior administrations. All of a sudden, the troubles start under the current administration. Someone did something. At what level? We're not sure. I know the Congress is investigating. Well, and that's the question. Who authorized it? Who specifically gave the go-ahead? And where, who's taking the responsibility? Here's an exchange that Stephen Miller, the now-resigned uh, IRS acting commissioner, gave before Congress. Listen to him on this issue. Let me ask you about another letter that was received by a pro-life group, this one in Iowa. Their question specifically asked from the IRS to the Coalition for Life of Iowa, quote, please detail the content of the members of your organization's prayers. Would that be an appropriate question to a 501c3 applicant? The content of one's prayers. It, it pains me to say I can't speak to that one either, but that's... 
You don't know whether or not that would be an appropriate question to ask an applicant? Speaking outside of this case, which I don't know anything about, it would surprise me that that question was asked. Your thoughts? Well, I want to thank Congressman Aaron Schock for putting that right to the commissioner, because that question needed to be asked, and it was good that on a day when I know that almost every answer seemed like, I don't know, I can't comment, at least we finally got an answer to that question. It was inappropriate. And so, again, if you're asking for, hey, is this inappropriate conduct across an agency that seemed to start right after the president took office, how can you say that it's anything but some sort of an orchestrated campaign? Yeah, he said it would surprise him if that question was asked, but that's the question, is who is minding the shop at the IRS? Why are these things coming as surprises? To whom are they not surprises, and who orchestrated them to begin with? Peter, thanks for being here. Thank you, Megan. All the best. Also 